Now, the first thing you're going to learn about C Sharp is about variables. And we will be talking a bit about what kind of variables we have inside C Sharp in this episode here, since they are slightly different from if you were to come from a web development background, because we have to declare them slightly differently. As you can see, I still have the project from yesterday. So we're just going to continue working in this project. I just simply deleted the console uh, statement that we had inside our main method here. So we have a completely clean project now. Now, for the people who don't know what a variable is, because I know some of you may not know what it actually is, a variable is a type of container that we can create in order to store information in them. So if I want to save maybe a number for later use, or if I want to store a set of characters like a sentence or a word, if I want to store a true or false statement, there's a lot of different things we can store inside these variables here. And we do this, like I said, so we can use them for later inside our project. So when it comes to creating these variables, we have to do it slightly different than if we were to come from a web development background. If I were to take another language such as JavaScript, we would start a variable in JavaScript by declaring a variable, by saying we have a va, which is the keyword we use to start a variable, and then include the name of the variable. So I could say it's called name, and then I could just simply set it equal to some kind of data. So I could set equal to, for example, my name here and then close off the variable. So now we declare the variable and we assign the value to it. Now in C sharp, we do the exact same thing, or at least we can do the exact same thing. This right here is also a legit variable in C sharp. However, when it comes to C sharp, we'd like to do it in a slightly different way because when we create these types of variables, we don't really know what kind of data we have going on inside these variables here. So right now, if I were to take a mouse cursor and hover on top of the, the name for the variable, you can actually see that it says string name. So it does, it does actually point out that our variable called name is a string. So by using this VAT keyword, it does actually figure out on its own what kind of data we're dealing with when we create these sort of variables here. But at least in my case, a lot of times we don't just use VAT because it's sort of a lazy way to do it. And we like to keep control in our own hands and declare the variables ourselves and tell the program what kind of variable it is. So in this example here, let me go ahead and change it into what would be a better way to do it, or at least not as lazy way to do it when we create C sharp applications. So if we were to take this variable here, again, we declare the variable with the keyword in front of it by telling it what kind of data type it is, then we give it a name, then we set it equal to something. And again, you don't always have to set it equal to something. You can just declare the variable, which is perfectly fine, and then later on assign a value to it. And that does have a specific purpose when you create your applications, because maybe from the beginning, when you run the applications, you don't have any value to put inside your variables. But then later on, the user does something inside your program that needs to be stored inside a variable. And then it's nice to have the variable declared before we actually get to that point. But let's go ahead and go back once and just go ahead and talk about this keyword called var. Because at least in my case, I don't like using var as a keyword because I want to keep control over my application when I create stuff inside my C Sharp applications. So instead, I would actually directly, instead of var, change this into string because I'm creating a string type variable. So I declare a string, name it, and then set it equal to something. Then later on, if I want to actually use this data, because like I said, we just stored a piece of information inside a variable, which is a container. So if later on I want to use this information, I can do that by again, I can go inside our console class and just simply write out, let's say write line. And I can simply write out this variable here. So inside the parentheses, I can say we have variable name. And it does actually come up with a suggestion for a variable we already created called name. So I can just go and say enter. And if I were to run this program, you can actually see that if I were to open up the console, it says Daniel inside the console here. Now, when it comes to naming conventions, I also do want to talk about this because when it comes to writing out the name of a variable, so if we were to take again this string called name, if I were to include a longer name, as you may notice, I did not make the first letter capitalized. That is because this is a variable and it is sort of a habit of programmers to not make the first letter capitalized. But instead, if I were to have two words inside the variable, then instead, if I were to call it something like my name, I could say my 
name and then the second word or the third and the fourth are going to be capitalized. But the first word is not going to be capitalized. And this is something we call camel case and we use this sort of naming convention. We do also have something called Pascal case, which is when we do actually take all the first letters and make them big. And again, you can do both ways inside your application, but I think it's nice to keep one specific way of naming things when it comes to variables and another way when it comes to, for example, methods, because in methods, we start with a big letter. So while we have variables, we also have something called a constant and a constant is something that is very similar to a variable. It is essentially a variable, but not a variable that we're going to change later on. So it stays the same. So let's say I want my variable here to become a constant, meaning that I don't want it to change later on. And by the way, we do this with data that has to stay the same the entire time, just for safety, so we don't by accident later on change it into something else. So a constant is a good way to do this, so you don't do this by accident. So to create a constant instead of a variable, I'm gonna go ahead and declare a constant in front of our data type inside the variable here. So I'm gonna say we have a const, space and then the name of the data type then the name of the variable and then the value another thing you need to be aware of when it comes to constants is that we have to give it some kind of value remember i said before when it comes to variables we don't necessarily need to give it a value so we could just declare it when it comes to constants since we can't add value to it later on or change the value because it's a constant so it stays constant we can't create a constant without having assigned a value to it. And as you can see, it does also give me a type of warning here because it doesn't really like the idea about a constant not having a value. So we just talked about a few keywords you could use in order to declare a variable such as var, if you want to be lazy, or if you want to declare a string, then you can just use the keyword string, then the name of the variable, and then maybe assign it a value. We have a lot of different data types that we can assign inside a variable. And I do have a list here that does actually explain, maybe it's over here, I think it's actually popping up over here, uh, that does explain different types of data we can have inside a variable. And we won't be using all of these. There's actually quite a lot on this list here. And most of them you probably won't be using inside your application. So this here would actually be a shorter version of what it would potentially look like if you were to look at the ones you would actually be using. And again, really the thing you want to do here is look at this list here and say, well, maybe I want to declare a number. And the way we would do that is by going down here, create a int data type, and then say we want to call it something like number and then set it equal to some kind of number. Now, because this above here was a string, we needed to put the information inside double quotes. And this is just something we need to do because we're dealing with a string here. But in this case, since we're creating a number, we can actually do without having it inside double quotes. So I could just simply write something like 16 and then close it off here. And then we would actually have a number or an integer data type. Now there is two data types on this list here that I want to talk about even further because when it comes to creating these types of data inside our variables, we need to create them slightly different. Just like when we want to create a string, we have to put double quotes around them. With these two, which I actually call real numbers, we have to assign the value in a slightly different way. So if I want to declare a float or a decimal type data, then when we actually assign the value to it, we need to put a letter behind the actual number that we want to assign to it. So if I were to create, for example, a float, then we need to declare it by saying it's equal to, let's say 2.8F, which stands for float. And then when it comes to a decimal data type, it wants to use the keyword M behind the actual number. So it actually knows what we're talking about here. And this is something you have to do. Now, the reason that I want to talk about these types of data, these real numbers, is because especially when it comes to game development inside Unity, you will be using float numbers very often. So knowing that you have to put an F behind the number is very important for you to know about. So this is basically what variables are inside C-sharp. And there's one more thing I want to just briefly talk about before we end up this episode, which is something called overflowing, which is an issue you may run into in the future, but it's such a rare issue that you may never encounter it, but I still think it's a good idea to actually talk about it. As you can see inside my illustration here, we not only have a column called data types, but we also have a column called bytes. And this column is also very important when it comes to how much you can have inside one of these variables here. So inside the data type called byte, you can see we can have a maximum of one byte inside this variable, meaning that we can only contain the numbers from zero to 255. So if I were to put the number, let's actually go ahead and print out an example here. If I were to create a byte type uh, variable and just call it name and set it equal to, let's say, 
255, then this would actually be the maximum of bytes I could have inside this byte data type. If it were to include 256, then we're actually gonna start overflowing because we can't have more numbers than 255 and we would actually be overflowing by one inside this data type here. So you need to be kind of aware of how much information you can contain inside these variables here. In some cases, you may want to, when you create a project, convert a certain a variable data type into another data type to use it for a specific purpose. And in these cases, we can risk overflowing when it comes to data. But that is only something that you may run into if you do actually have one of those examples and it's not something we're gonna talk about this early on. So I just thought I'd mention that when it comes to creating different types of variables, you know, with different data types, then we also do have a maximum of how much data you can insert into those variables. So this is all I want to share in this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next episode.